All right, my friends, so today, today we are doing a video that I wanted to do kind of ahead of time. I'm gonna move that a little bit over there. That's the way I think, that's better. A little bit ahead of time because, hold on, one more thing. Um, I wanted you guys to see how this works. Uh, I'm doing a video in a, probably in a day or two uh, from now in regards to the ZV-1 versus the ZV-E10 uh, and the comparison because I went out, you guys may have seen it, it was a little video on our weekend trip to Cape Breton and I literally shot everything with both cameras. So I had it on a little setup so both cameras were sitting side by side and I could click record. Uh, the video that you guys saw, if you saw that little uh, trip video, our little holiday vlogging video, uh, was all shot or all edited with the ZVE 10 footage, but I wanted to do a comparison because I'm sure there's a lot of you that are like, well, which camera should should you get? Um, and like, how did you process it? So one of the things just to be aware of is uh, I shot everything with no stabilization on both of those cameras because both of them accept or have gyro data. So they have gyro data, which is cool. And um, you can use this program here called uh, Catalyst Catalyst Browse. Now you do have to register with Sony, so they want to make sure that you actually have a Sony camera, et cetera, et cetera, as far as I, I know. Um, but this is this is the software here, and and all you do is if I come through here and I have, let's see if I can have I have some Sony yeah ZV1 original footage. So this is all original footage here, taken with it. And you'll see this little icon right here. It looks like a camera with a little, like the steady, steady shot kind of thing put on it. Uh, that means that that footage has that gyro information in it. Um, so if you shoot with any of the stabilization, the active stabilizer or the, like the enhanced, uh, you can't use this. Uh, if you shoot, in like 120 frames or anything like that. You can't use it. You'll see down here, these are four shots that I shot in 1080, 120 or three shots. You don't get it, which is fine because it's slow. It's gonna be slowed down, so that's not gonna be that big of an issue. But um, it works surprisingly well. And there's a few things that I want you guys to see. So I'm gonna just pick one here. Uh, let's pick, let's see if I can find one here where Mary's kind of like, Well, here's a nice panning shot. So it's a pan from right to left, okay? So I'm gonna bring up the stabilize down at the bottom. And this is the original shot, and this is the after shot. So you can come up here and say before, and there it is, so you can we can play this back, and you can see how shaky that is. That's what happens with no stabilization, right? That's kind of the shot that you're getting. Okay, I'm with you. Let's back that back up again. And we'll go back to our after, and you can see here, it's much, it's like incredibly smooth in regards to this. Um, now, the Catalyst Browse software will crop in, but it's not a predetermined crop that you would get if you were like running the enhanced stabilization or anything like that. So, there's a few things that I have done just a little differently uh, in regards here. So once you have this up, you'll see that there's an auto at the top and a manual. And the auto normally is down here. And you actually see that as I pulled it, it zoomed in more, okay? So let's say around 80%. And, and you guys can really make this decision as to what you want. And this will be uh, that it will automatically determine up to 80% uh, whether, uh, what it needs to do to get that stable. Okay. Uh, I'm, I find for most that the 80% and it can go, you'll see it with auto go all the way up to like 50 and 40% if you're like really shaky. Um, but I found that I never want my footage more than about a 10% crop. So 90, and you can just click on this here and be like 90%. Okay. And it says, okay. I got, I got a 10% crop to work with. Or you can click on manual and manual will tell you what it thinks it should be. 
and you can manually just adjust it. So this is 88, which is what the computer thinks or Catalyst Browse thinks it, sh it should be for stabilization. I'm telling it you only get 90, right? So 10%. And I use this auto as my, that's the most you can try to stabilize. Anything over that, you're cropping too much. I don't want to lose that information. So when I come into a clip like this, it starts here with its 90 and I go look between the two. This one's 88, this one's 90. So I'm picking the 90. I'm going to hit this. This is your like export. And at that point in time, all of this is normally good. Same as source, same as source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. Same as source. Now this one here, render preset, when I started mine, it was actually set at 60. I cranked mine up to hundred because I just wanted as much as possible. It's up to you really what you want to do and optimize image quality. Yep. Or do you want to optimize speed? Now I did image quality. Okay. And if you so choose, maybe there's a section that you want and you're like, I only want, you see these little handles on the in, in and out points. I only want this section to this section. And when you're exporting now, you can actually check this and you can say only from the in and out points. And that's going to help, you know, only get that section of video, which will speed up the encoding, of course, because you're not encoding extra video footage that you just aren't going to be using um, because this can take some time. Uh, one day of shooting for me, uh, which wasn't a lot because I only shot like 10, 15 second clips. Uh, it probably took me all morning to go through and do all my footage, like four hours. And that's just getting it all re-encoded and stabilized before I can actually get it into editing. So realize that I do think this is the better um, way to do your footage for stabilizing with the Sony cameras that accept this, but it is time consuming for sure. So we can come through here and be like, yeah, export this. Now, if we wanted to, I'm going to close this. Uh, yep. And let's find another one. So let's say this one here. We'll just see if we can find one that it does it to. Then we'll go stabilize. Same thing here, right? My auto is 90. This one, 82. So that's a lot more. It'll be a better stabilization, but you are cropping. So kind of just be aware of that. I'm trying to find one here that I was somewhat stable. Oh, let's try one of these. These, This I actually held the camera pretty stable. So again, we'll come in here, stabilize and 90 manual 93 so it says we don't need 90 93 should be fine so at that point i'm going to use manual click on my arrow all this should be good the nice thing is, is it does remember now i'm going to take that off but it does remember kind of your last settings which is great i'm going to hit export then you hit because it, it only lets you do one clip at a time now i think uh you can pay for an upgraded version which will allow you to do cues and stuff like that but I, I like free free is good and this you'll see it go through here and this machine here this is it's all dependent how long this takes on your computer so I'm running an iMac uh, i7 uh, 64 gigs of RAM uh, it's 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 fairly fast uh, but you can even see like it's already still got it's probably about 40 45 seconds for I think it's like a 12 second clip. So just be aware you could be sitting here, but the end results are, are really quite impressive for the most part. Now I shot at 1 50th of a second and I've been told that because of that, I have motion blur, but it gives the program less information to work with. So if you don't mind uh, throwing those, uh, video rules out the window where you're doing like the 180 degree or the two times your actual shutter speed uh, and you can get your footage to look a little more crispy then it can stabilize even better so it's a little bit of a which way do you want to fall uh, I found for most of it it actually stabilized pretty decently at uh, 150th of a second so now if you look at these side by side like it's it's quite an impressive different difference between the like that's really shaky that's completely usable so um there you go a little quick tour of catalyst browse uh and this easily can be used with the zv1 or the zve10 both of it support it 
And uh, we're going to have a video again coming out in the next day or two probably in regards to uh, some video and photos shot with both of these cameras and see if you guys can tell the difference and then we'll figure out which one we think maybe you should get. All right. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and we will see you fine folks tomorrow. Later, my friends.